What was the first lesson God taught Peter from the vision in Acts 10? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Acts on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Acts chapter 10, verses 9 to 23, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Acts 10, verse 9, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened like an, and an object like a great sheet bound at the, at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and the birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean, and a vo voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Now while Peter wondered within himself with this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from, from Cornelius had made inquiry of, uh, for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house, and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. In our last lesson, we met a Roman centurion named Cornelius. Cornelius was a devout man who prayed often, who gave alms to the people, and who led his family to be religious as well. He lived in Caesarea, a coastal city in Palestine, located at the top of the map on the screen now. Living in Caesarea, he would have been exposed to the Jewish religion, and so, uh, and so the God that Cornelius was praying to was the true God of heaven. But there was something still wrong with Cornelius. He hadn't obeyed Jesus yet. And as such, it didn't matter what other good works he did, for we know that Jesus is the only way to salvation, according to Acts 4, verse 12. Seeing as how Cornelius was a devout man, and the, and the Gentiles as yet had not had the gospel preached to them, God sent an angel to Cornelius to tell him to send men to Joppa, to a uh, city down the coast in Palestine, in order to get Simon Peter, a man staying with another man named Simon, a tanner, and he would tell Cornelius what he must do. Cornelius did just that, which brings us to verse 9. In Joppa, it is now the next day uh, after the man had left Caesarea, about noon, the sixth hour of the day. And Peter is on the roof praying. Naturally, with it being around lunchtime, Peter became hungry. But while provisions were being made, Peter fell into a trance. While in this trance, Peter saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him. On the sheet were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. Peter was told to rise, kill and eat. Now, we don't know what animals were on the sheet specifically, but from Peter's response that he hadn't eaten any animal that was common or unclean, we know that there were unclean animals on this sheet. If you recall back to Leviticus 11, you'll remember that we studied about classifications of animals that were unclean for the Jews to eat. For instance, a camel was forbidden for food because it didn't have a split hoof. The hyrax was unclean for the same reason. Pigs were unclean because it didn't chew the cud. Thus, for a beast of the field to be considered clean, it must have a split hoof and chew the cud like sheep and cows do. Also, also unclean were mice as well as lizards along with birds like the black kite. For a Jew to eat these animals would be to break the law of Moses and thus to a Jew it would have been sin. But in the sheet coming down from heaven, a voice came there too, 
and it is implied that God is speaking. One thing we know about God is that he doesn't tempt men to sin. He might test our faith, but he is not tempting us to sin. Therefore, if God says something, it is not sin. And it is not sin because God is the one who defines what sin is. Fornication is only sinful to mankind because God said so. The animals do not get married and mate with whomever they want. And yet they do not sin, for animals don't have the capacity to. Mankind, being made in God's image, has the ability to choose right or wrong, which is set by God's standard. Thus, for Peter to be objecting to what God said is to resist the word of God. Such would be sin, too. That's why the voice from heaven told Peter, What I have cleansed you must not call common. So what is the first lesson God wanted Peter to learn from this vision? The law of Moses was removed by Christ's death and resurrection. That Christ ushered in a new covenant, and these dietary laws and these laws about physical cleanliness and uncleanliness were no longer in effect. What mattered now was spiritual cleanness, something that could only come through Jesus. Therefore, any animal that is good for food may be eaten by Peter and may be eaten by Christians today. There are no animals that we cannot eat if we so choose, though there still are restrictions on the eating of blood, as we will see in Acts 15. Peter saw this vision three times and wondered what it meant before the men sent by Cornelius arrived. With these men being Gentiles, Peter might have been tempted not to go with them. So the Spirit of God told Peter to go with them, doubting nothing, for they had been sent by God. And so it was, when Peter knew why they had come, the next day he accompanied these men back up to Caesarea. We'll continue with the story, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Acts chapter 10, verses 24 to 33, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.